and I'm a PhD student at Open Lab at Newcastle University. Uh, and this paper is quite nicely related to the last one, and it's, it's also concerns academic collaboration, um, but it's also a very, very different piece of work. Uh, and I'm presenting this on behalf of my, my co-authors, uh, in particular Sebastian Mello, who's down at the front there, and he's done a huge amount of work in the development and design of the visualisation that we're talking about in this work. And so this project's about a visualisation of academic metrics um, that we've made and deployed um, in collaboration with our university. Um, but what I really want to talk about today is less the visualisation itself and much more about the politics of this visualisation. So what we present today, in fact, is a qualitative interview study and a set of reflections about what happens when we make often sensitive metrics public um, and the politics and design issues when we democratise data in this way. So academic metrics will be familiar to many of us. Um, we mean things like citations, grant income, university league tables, journal impact factors, student surveys. Um, there's a number of metrics that we might have. And there are an example of what many people have called an audit culture, um, so where the techniques and the values of accountancy have become a central organising principle in the governance and management of human conduct, and new kinds of relationships, habits, practices this is creating. And so, of course, the way that we now manage ourselves, our departments, our universities, is increasingly driven by such metrics. And as one might imagine, there's an awful lot of critique and concern about these trends from uh, a range of disciplines, but especially within sociology. Um, Seb and I have actually uh, presented uh, some of this work at a, a conference on power, acceleration and metrics in academic life. Um, so we're very concerned here with how these things might change our practices and welfare uh, as academics, um, and specifically looking at the way that metrics come to act as instruments of power, um, the way that they may be biased or disproportionate in different ways. But of course we could be having this debate in many different industries. Performing metrics are incredibly, uh, increasingly prevalent. But the important thing is here that they're actually much more than just a sociological concern. Um, this audit culture that people talk about, these metrics and the data have to be produced and they have to be materialised and designed to be made visible. Um, and it's in this way that they get communicated and relied upon. Um, and so as they're becoming increasingly visible, recent work in HCI has been looking at this. Um, just last year, Pritchard, our study, looked at performance metrics changing the practices of London bus drivers. Um, and so what we, again, what we want to emphasise in this study, our focus is on the politics of making these kind of things more visible um, rather than you know, only the creation and existence. And so we see this actually as developing quite an applied understanding of what Taylor Al talked about at Kai last year as data in place. How does data become situated and come to matter in particular contexts? Um, and specifically, you were questioning what are the implications of making this kind of um, data transparent to several levels of management and employees throughout an organisation. And academic metrics are a really rich, complex and political context for us to be doing this in. And so as we unpick these implications, we're then asking, well, what's the role of information designers? Um, what, what role do we have in the way that this, 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 this happens? And so rather than seeing data as neutral or apolitical, um, we draw very strongly on Dork's critical infobiz and DeSalvo's politics of design to quite critically reflect on visualisation as a constructive, designed and powerful factor when we're employing metrics. So I want to really rapidly introduce the context we were working in, um, the interview study that we've done and the system that we've designed, and then study the spend the remaining time talking through just a small selection of the design issues that we raise. So as I said, we collaborated with our university in designing a visualisation of one particular metric, and that was academic funding. That is the competitive grant income earned by academics as they're applying for funding for projects from research councils or things like the NSF. And so the university obviously wants to encourage this as much as possible, and it has three broad agendas. The first of those is the raise the bar agenda. They're trying to raise expectations um, and sort of also con somewhat controversially set targets for the research money um, that might be that is earned by academics. And there's a strong emphasis here on academics should be understanding themselves, the funding landscape, and take more individual responsibility for the money that they might earn. The university also wants to encourage collaboration and interdisciplinarity. They want to have larger strategic grants between different departments working together. And the final thing that they're hoping they might be able to do with this data and visualisation, is they, want to, they do want to become more transparent. They want to make better use of what data that they have and be open. And again, they'll encourage a sort of wider sort of self-management throughout the university. Now, given the sort of sociological critiques that I've mentioned earlier, we don't necessarily see these agendas as unproblematic. 
Um, so I should just spend a moment sort of unpacking our stance in this project as we were doing this for the university. So the metrics that ResViz is uh, visualising, they already exist, and they're already in use by the university. It's already a key thing on which academics are being judged. But largely, at the moment, this is hidden in spreadsheets, it's hidden in co committees or restricted access IT systems. Um, so what we're really seeking here is quite a productive and or hopefully productive and public confrontation with these metrics as one means of response. So we're really seeking to investigate like, how do you sensitively make these metrics and their politics visible as a wide-scale university system. And so just to say briefly a bit about the data, um, the university has an internal data set of all of the externally funded projects. So this comes through the system that academics have to use for applying for their research funding. So we, and primarily Seb, has been working with the university over the past year to create ResViz, which is this interactive visualisation of all of this data. Um, and the key point is this to be available for staff and potentially wider publics, whom at the moment, even though some of this data might be ostensibly public because it's from some publicly funded money, it's not seen together in this way. I might know what my grant income is, but I perhaps might know what my best colleague's uh, grant income is, but I certainly might not know it for the wider um, faculty, say. Um, and so it's worth saying as well, so at the time of us doing this research and writing, the university has been releasing ResVis, um, as a pilot sort of key stakeholders across the university. And it's alongside that that we've conducted this, this sort of interview study. Importantly here, we're not trying to just evaluate ResViz. Um, we're actually employing it in quite a critical way as a critical artifact, a provocation and a vehicle for us to start to have these reflective conversations about what we're doing and about the role of metrics in the academy. So let me talk you through quickly now ResViz, and I'm, this, again, this is going to be described very quickly. The main contribution of this paper is not the visualisation, it's a lot more about the, 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 the situation in which it's in. Um, so it's live, it's updated nightly, and it's interactive, web-based visualisation of the grant come of every academic department and faculty um, in the university. What you'll see on the inner ring uh, is three layers. This inner ring is people, the, the middle ring is the schools or departments that they're from, and the outer ring um, being the, the larger faculty that they're a part of. Um, and so this represents the distribution of funding across the university, and generally if you see someone with a, with a bigger se segment, it means they proportionally have more money um, in relation to other collaborat collaborators or departments. And so at each stage, the chords that you see, the connections in the centre, show the project relationships. Um, these are key, they, sh they show the sort of collaboration and highlight areas of strong interdisciplinarity or weaknesses in interdisciplinarity. For example, you would see that computer science is connected to many other different departments. Um, so you can see how much money individuals receive by hovering over, um, but you can also scroll down and find more information about the projects themselves. Um, other things you can do, you can search for individual academics, and we can click through and explore this in quite an interactive um, way. So I'm going to move on from that. Again, there's more, a bit more detail about that in the paper, um, and get on to sort of talk about what we talked about. Um, so, the, the, as I said, this was alongside this limited pilot. We've done 20 semi-structured interviews um, with these key stakeholders. So, there was three people who were senior managers, um, really people who are quite high up in the university. Um, we spoke to nine senior academics who were generally heads of department or responsible for research for a whole department. We also spoke to six research support staff, so administrative staff who had the job of helping academics with their grant writing and applying and receiving funding. And we also spoke to a couple of early career researchers to get a different perspective from them about metrics. Um, and the interview itself, we really were interested in their interpretation of ResViz, what they thought it was for, how they thought it would be used by different people, how they might use it. Of course, we were interested in how it might support practices like looking for collaborators or doing funding applications, but we also sought their criticisms and implications of the publicity of this data, the fact that other people in the university would see it. Um, and this allowed us to have a general discussion about the future use of data and metrics in their role. So I want to spend the rest of the time talking about some of the findings and the design issues that are raised in this work. Um, and again, there's an awful lot more in the paper, and I'm going to focus more towards the design side today to give you some sort of clearer sort of take-homes. But the first thing I want to emphasize again is just the really contested and political nature um, of this. Particularly people who are in a sort of middle management or sort of heads of departments are in a really challenging role um, where they're expected and required to use metrics in their job to be good at their job and to go about it in the way that they do. 
and yet they have, they have quite a bit of unease about this. Uh, sociologists have described this as a notion of to play or be played by acad academic metrics. And so we saw so many examples of this sort of double speak that's in this quote here, where they say, oh, well, it would be great to use this to communicate in a selective way, externally or internally, that would be very useful. But then simultaneously worrying about how other people having open access to it, you're seeing a very limited dimension of a person's professional role. So there's a sense of, you know, a real sort of... Um, we want to use these things, but being very, being very concerned about how they're used. Okay? And Res Visit staff is still going through a set of university committees and ongoing debates about how it's to be managed. Um, so we don't stand here proposing a set of solutions to these tensions that academics feel. Instead, what we're trying to do is highlight all the significant design issues and bumps along that road in undertaking visualisation work in these really politically charged spaces. Okay? So in the paper, we've got seven design issues, um, and again, these sort of represent tensions and decisions that we've encountered through both the design process and that we've reflected upon following these interviews. Some of these resumes are able to deal with better than others, and again, it's in surfacing these that we hope to have a much more reflective discussion about the politics and the, a sort of critical reflection on designing and visualising metrics and what that means when they become situated in place. So I'm only going to talk about three of these. Um, but with them, I'm going to report some of the findings that they relate to as well. So there are really two distinct ways that you might approach something like ResVis, okay? The first is quite unstructured and exploratory. You might just have a look around. You might just search for yourself. Many people did this. Um, this was a, you know, and this exploratory interaction was kind of what was intended in the design through the code-based interactive and the monadic design um, of the, of the visualisation. Um, the other hand, you might be do, looking for something more structured reporting, where you go in looking for a specific piece of data or information. You're seeking to evidence or make some particular argument, perhaps, about your department or yourself. You want to use ResVis in proxy of some other data. So we saw the difference between it being used as a visualization tool to give you explore and to give you a better understanding of the world versus it being used as a reporting tool to categorically report and evidence the world and then act directly upon this. And so these two different quotes ex explain this somewhat. So the top point, it's a visualization tool. It's not a tell me what I need to do tool. So it's just giving people a better understanding. Um, it's not sort of saying you have to go and do this. Whereas the second quote sort of suggests someone I, if I want to convince people at faculty or university level, this is a school with a sort of real interdisciplinary collaboration of potential. That would be quite a useful thing to do. So they're imagining using this in a very structured way. And this is an interesting challenge because there's clearly value in having a sort of multiplicity that encourages expo exploration and interactively using different filters and perspectives. Um, with ResVis, there's no download option. Again, this is how we sort of thought people would, might, go, might, might use it. Um, but at the same time, you know, participants seem to value the idea of a standard reference point. They'd have lots of different data thrown at them, and they've had resumes they thought could potentially be a place, a data source on which we could all agree on and have common cause across layers of management. Um, the second thing is that we need to be aware about the ways in which transparency and open metrics will challenge existing means of expertise. Um, Esplin and Stevens discussed this. They say that um, metrics promote depersonalised forms of knowing rather than private and particularistic forms of knowing. What that's really saying is the way that we create and discuss knowledge is quite different when we introduce metrics. Okay? Um, and so this challenge is obviously one of the key strengths of an open agenda, the idea that we might use metrics and visualisation to break down certain hierarchies. Um, but nonetheless, many people feel um, that something like Redswood would undermine not just their expertise, but also their sensitive management um, based on a particular contextual understanding they might have. They might know why, a why a, an employee is underperforming on a certain metric, for example, in the way that the data might coldly make, make look another way. Um, and yet, of course, again, it's this distance that metrics might well be valued for. Um, of course, when we move to make data clearer and make it more open, um, it's inevitably there's much detail and context that becomes stripped out. So really the acute political design question is, how do metrics come to be contextualised, and by whom, and in which ways? Um, we're designing here for a really diverse set of understandings that people might have. Um, and so this comes to this last thing about, should the context that this data needs to be put in, we need to understand how this sort of, this visualisation relates to our real academic practices. Um, should it occur through the data or in person? So many participants would frequently appeal um, that there could be more context, there could be more data that was added to ResVis, there could be more information about the projects themselves, the external partners on them, there could be information about the funding histories. 
Um, obviously, lots of this context could be very, very useful. But in some ways, each edition goes on to make ResVis potentially less flexible, less interpretive, potentially more determinative as to saying this is the view of the world. Um, and clearly, there's also going to be practical, legal, and aesthetic limitation to how much data we can ever put in there. Some data will always be missing. So if we're to take this approach to its logical conclusion, there's an assumption, well, if only there was enough data, we could get the full, full picture. But that's never really ever going to be the case. Um, and as Dorcet out of caution does, there's no one visualization that's going to capture all aspects of a particular phenomenon from all perspectives. So while people seek these details, um, the fear is that there's potential to be driven too strongly um, by the metrics themselves. So ultimately, there's this very fine balance. Um, how do, do we design um, personal visualizations that have enough detail and context, but where data and human share agency in how that data gains purchase in the world. And this is especially important when we're representing individual people and their very complex work practices and data. What academics do, how they get funded, should be a story told with data and in person. And so many of the, the, the details, the challenges in ResVis and these design issues are about trying to balance that agency. Um, so finally, what do you think this all means? Again, it's a talk of balances and, and tensions. But people really seek metrics to get insight and answer, and yet at the same time they experience this desire for it not to be taken as given. Um, and in our case, we think that the findings really show support for this idea from, from Dork's work of a questioning lens on the data. Um, and through these design issues, we hope to show how this questioning might begin to be negotiated. Um, there's more detail in the paper about how different design decisions we took um, played out in certain ways and with these, these design issues that might make people question or, or, or accept the data in different ways. Um, and again, this critique is building on the idea that any metric or data visualization um, is never going to offer an, a neutral or objective perspective on the world. They're always going to be contested what they mean and how relevant they are to the given thing that we're talking about. And so the final key point is that the value and sort of the meaning of data it comes through its human appropriation and application rather than only being asserted through the technological materialization. What we mean by that is that the situational politics of the visualization, who sees it, on what terms, and with what intentions, is as important as the visual and the interactive design. What we're saying is there's never going to be an ideal visualization with just enough data that on its own will adequately deal with all of the issues and politics involved in metric-based management, right? And you think about the way that metrics exist in your own life as an academic and your own practices, you'll recognize that, you, you know, that on its own, they only ever say so much. Of course, they can be very useful. And it leads us to the final thing that the role for us, we think, as information designers, is to support and promote this responsible appropriation and application of metrics. Okay? We think that, um, we think that um, Marion Dort's work, this questioning lens, is a very, one very good way that we might go about trying to support that responsible um, appropriation. And so we should be paying attention to some of the design, design issues we've raised here, um, and many of these concern the situated um, politics and management of metrics as data in place. Thank you very much. Um, so the, the choice of the code diagram, um, and this one as well, it's, it's just, I should say, um, you want to talk to us about at the, at the end as well, Seb will be able to answer a lot more of the technical questions about it. Um, I think one of, the, one of the key things that people were looking for as well was, um, was a sense of temporality um, within, within the data, um, and the idea that you know, the, the, you know, they might have a project which um, just starts tomorrow, um, which is a multi-million pound project, or one that just finished yesterday. Um, and so clearly they felt that if they were going to use something like ResVis to tell academic stories about themselves and be able to make particular arguments, that then that temporality would be important um, for them as well. So that's one thing. But, but yeah, there's a number of, there's a number of uh, potential, sort of, or any sort of number of tweaks that, that would be quite possible. So ResVis isn't an ideal solution by any means to all of this. Hey, John. Um, hi, Chris. Is this? Yes, it is. 
I'm just a bit too tall holding it up. Um, so um, you'll remember this, hopefully. Not everyone in the audience might know this. Uh, you presented a good paper yesterday or the day before, Solar Blur, um, about metadata. And in that paper, you say, you know, you go to sort of pains in one paragraph to point out you're not, you're not building a dating site there. You're not building something. Um, whereas here, I mean, you are. You're making something. And I just wondered if there are any kind of differences, methodological differences, practical differences you can sort of comment on here, you know, in researching the sort of the role and the practices around data when you're building something and when you're, when you're not building mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. I think that one of the interesting things there about is about how the openness with which participants will think about it. And, 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 and so we, even though this comes across as a, some quite a finished system and they were aware of it within the, this set of university systems. Mm -hmm. So we had a really, I had a very interesting role with the interviewer here. Um, because people weren't sure, is he coming from the university? Is he part of the management? So I had to go to real pains, in a sense, to try and get people to think broadly about what they want to be. In a sense, try and almost roll back res a little bit and sort of say, well, it could be other things. What, what, would you, what, you know, what other things should it achieve? Um, I think the role of speculation um, in the previous project was really useful as a way of breaking down dominant paradigms that exist around um, the use of quantified self. I think in this context, because these types of visualizations, at least at a staff level, are less common, it still comes across as something quite new and different to people. So we still got quite a lot of interest and reaction in that regard. Um, that's probably a much longer answer than that. <laughs> ben Schneider, University of Maryland. Thank you for appropriately pointing out the ty potential tyranny of using metrics and making them visible. But isn't there an equally potential tyranny from not using them? that allowing subjective impressions of strong leaders to dominate discussions rather than balanced with Absolutely, metrics? yeah, 100%. And we spoke to some, particularly the early career researchers were like, they could exactly. see the, the value of this, for example, in you know, not relying on a particular professor for funding applications. So, um, the key point, though, is, uh, is, that, is getting the shared agency between the two systems. Okay? So between, you equally wouldn't want a tyrannical metric system, and equally you want to have a visualization that is accessible in ways and can be used by a variety of people and interpreted in a variety of different ways. It's, it's a kind of murky answer, but, th but that's really what we're trying to highlight here is the politics of it. Thank you very much. <laughs>